this is Eric from the African Homestead. Welcome back. We're getting a little bit of a late start this morning. We had uh, some things came up, ended up taking a long weekend. So we're back on the job site now. We're gonna finish laying out the foundation for the shipping container. We're gonna continue to clean up the property. We've got a crew of about 12 today. I, I wanted it a little bit smaller so we could manage it. We don't have as much clearing the land to do. It's more cleaning up everything that's been dropped on the ground. So we're piling those all up and let those uh, piles start to rot here in the rain. And uh, I tell you what, yesterday was beautiful. I tried to come, I was up at 5.30 in the morning and then my uh, Land Cruiser wouldn't start. And so I ended up uh, having to find glow plugs. And it's, it's interesting. So if you buy used parts, you're gonna have better luck than if you buy new parts. And so I just replaced these glow plugs about a month ago with new glow plugs. And almost immediately they started burning out. So yesterday morning when I went to start the car, the last one finally uh, finally smoked and it wouldn't start. And so we ended up finding some used glow plugs, uh, which you know are from the factory, from Toyota, and uh, it, they're working great. And it, the other strange thing is, if you buy new ones, you'll pay about 10 bucks a piece. But if you buy used ones, get this logic, if you buy used ones, because everybody knows they're better, you pay 15 bucks a piece. And so I paid the money and I'm crossing my fingers that they're used but not too used and that they'll be able to give me years of good service. Anyway, that's a little bit of a sidetrack. So we're gonna work today and uh, finish cleaning up the land. And uh, by the end of this week, my goal is to have the foundation ready for the shipping container before I head off to the US to meet up with my family. Whew, it is sticky today. There's like no breeze, heavily overcast. It's one of those days where you hope the sun doesn't come out and our little rain wouldn't be bad. But uh, we got finished laying out the uh, foundation. And so uh, we check corner to corner to make sure it's square and it's within an eighth of an inch. So we're going to start digging. You know, I think an eighth of an inch is uh, good enough for a shipping container in Africa. So we're going to start the digging today, hopefully finish it today. We got a, group, a crew coming, God willing, tomorrow to start uh, to start casting the footers, and then we're gonna use uh, cinder blocks to build that up. I'm pretty sure. We had talked about casting the whole thing, building forms and casting it. Uh, just looking at the the cost versus uh, the benefit, and uh, haven't made that final decision yet. But we've got some digging to do. So we're just about ready to start digging the foundation and getting ready. We'll be casting footers hopefully tomorrow. Uh, but as they were digging, as they started digging, uh, we were telling the guys, okay, we need to make the trench one and a half feet wide, one and a half feet deep. And then it occurred to me that some of these guys maybe have not used a tape measure in the past. Uh, just something that's not, it's not needed here in the interior. And uh, so, Having that trench consistently wide, consistently deep, I knew would be a, a challenge. So I spent 20 years in manufacturing before I moved to Africa. Uh, spent time in uh, quality assurance, in process improvement, uh, quality management. And one of the things I learned was about mistake proofing. And if you can take away uh, the risk of using a tape measure or misreading it and replace it with something that's foolproof, that's, that's something that will assure that mistakes aren't made. And so what I did, let's see if you can see this. This is a check gauge. I cut this stick exactly 18 inches long, one and a half feet. And so we'll be able to lay it down in the trench and make sure it's wide enough. We'll be able to set it down vertically, make sure it's deep enough. <laughs> Pro tip for the day. When you're on the work site, get off your phone. And you know, it's just like, you know, you watch these Major League Baseball games and there's someone hits a long ball, it's gonna be a home run, it's flying into the stands and there's somebody sitting there on their phone, they're about to get smacked in the head with the baseball. Uh, it's kind of like that, except in my case, I'm standing here facing this direction, the guys are working behind me, all of a sudden I hear yelling, yelling, and they start running past me. So I turn around, I see, a six foot long black cobra headed straight towards me. And I think it's as scared as everybody else is. And so I turn around, I give him my evil eye. I'm kidding. 
I, I just I stood there and it turned and it headed over here into into the uh, the trench we were digging and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the video I'll, I'll spare you the goriest part but the guys go nuts they've got their machetes they got sticks in their hands and they they want to eat it <laughs> and so let's just say uh, I'm gonna go get some seasoning and bring uh, we're gonna make a little fire here and by the end of the day I'm gonna taste my first cobra <laughs> as we were digging here I just wanted to show you something regarding the topsoil in the tropics so I'm hoping you can see this uh, basically I'll show you the soil here you have this darker soil that's the topsoil then you have this it's kind of a red color and that's made up of clay and gravel and that here we call laterite and it's good for building roads because the the clay in it compacts and uh, the gravel fills up that space um, but if you can see it here we've got about four inches of topsoil and then you get into this laterite so the area where we're digging this foundation is is a level area and so when it was slashed and burned uh, probably two years ago, three years ago, um, you know, there, there wasn't a big problem with erosion and the topsoil washing away. So this, for the most part, stayed in place. And the, the type of farming they do is not, they don't do tilling. Um, when you, basically they call it scratching when you plant it. So you'll, you'll dig a little bit of a slot to plant the cassava. And when you're planting rice, you basically just broadcast the rice and then scratch it in on the surface. And so there's not a lot, there's no really tilling going on with the type of farming Liberians historically do. Now where we run into trouble with the slash and burn type of agriculture when it comes to the topsoil is on the hillsides, on the slopes. And you'll see some places that uh, after that first one to two years of farming, all of that topsoil, that four inches or less that's there is completely gone and it's just revealed this this gravel red laterite soil uh, and you know then it's it's it'll grow weeds it'll grow um, you know whatever it needs to do to start repairing itself and start to um, recover from that and start building topsoil again but as far as being useful for any type of food crops uh, vegetable crops anything like that it really has nothing left in it it's dead Okay, the snake's ready. This will be my first time eating snake. Yeah. Skin and everything. Very nice. Well, that's really good. I think I want to become a snake hunter. Two thumbs up. Had another good day today. Take a look at the foundation that we're digging out. 18 inches wide, 18 inches deep. Gate works well and uh, more than half done. Got to dig this this line tomorrow and then that's it. So probably not quite three quarters done. And then we pile up a whole bunch of brush today. Just all the stuff that's been knocked down. Got another pile back along the tree line there. And so this whole area is getting cleaned up. Here's the outdoor kitchen where we just ate some snake. It was really nice. And uh, that's the area where the house is gonna go and down. So another great day. So thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope you enjoy these village vlogs. I hope you find them interesting, educational, maybe a little bit funny. Maybe a little bit scary, but uh, that's life here in Liberia. So thanks a lot. Uh, if you will, share this uh, channel with your friends. Uh, like the video. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe and click the bell. And you'll get a notification every time that I post a video. And so we're going to keep uh, pushing forward. There's just going to be a ton of stuff going on in the coming months. I'm going to take a one-month break to head back to the States next week. And uh, my wife are going to celebrate her 25th wedding anniversary, which actually happened uh, a month ago. And so uh, we're going to take a little week away, cabin in the woods somewhere quiet. 
up in uh, Washington State, which has been, I haven't been there since I was a child. So I'm looking forward to that somewhere cool <laughs> where you don't just sweat waking up in the morning. So thanks again for coming along. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's about it. But this place, um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, just, I hope the wind's not messing with the mic too much, but I'm really excited about what is going to happen here over the next year. I mean, this place is really gonna be transformed as we start implementing things like farming God's way and permaculture and doing construction and doing development and um, building the soil, building the land and you know making it as productive and healthy as possible, which will make us as healthy as possible. So I hope you come along on this ride and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think about the channel, what you think about this episode or other episodes. Uh, that interaction is one of the things I love about YouTube. So have a great day. Bye-bye.